I'm Cody Alexander with MatchQuarters.com. Today we're going to talk about a chess match between Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers versus Zimmer and the Minnesota Vikings. So what we're going to see in the first two clips is 11 personnel. And all 11 personnel means we've got to tie it in through receivers. Now, San Francisco's in the shotgun, but in the next clip they'll be under center. It really doesn't matter. What matters is the personnel on the field. And the NFL is a big matchup league. So, for, for instance, this is what we would call... Uh, a big nickel because you've got your safety in in the in the nickel spot. Now, had this been like uh, let's say a, a true nickel backer or a corner is usually what you're going to see in uh, the NFL, and you'll have you'll have a, a nickel corner come on. You'll be three down. This would be similar to like if you ever watch um, Wisconsin or Ohio State when they get into their nickel pack, quote unquote nickel pack, is they're bringing in a third corner to play slot corner right here. Um, so, uh, what you've got again is you've got your outside, you got your linebackers. Okay. And the safety is down on the other side. So they're, they're actually going to make it look like it's, it's a cover three scheme here. So as we go down the, the, you've got the safety to the, the boundary safety inside. So as we get this change of strength motion, you're going to see that the nickel now is going to track with the slot. Now this is a this is a nice move by San Francisco because what they're going to do is do this little stutter orbit. So they actually change the strength of motion. So this is actually kind of quick motion. Change of strength motion, bringing the nickel over. Now the linebackers are going to switch. So the wheel linebackers are going to come over here. Mike doesn't really change. Okay, the moment that he starts moving back, this is this is what we would call quick motion. So it, this would be no different than if he aligned here and he just started working here. They've already switched, so they can't they can't move back. Uh, I mean, they could, but it would look like a it would look like a, a jumbled mess inside. Guys, we don't so what they're already saying is is they're probably given whatever their swap call or stay call is, meaning that he's now going to work out here with this motion as it pushes, and then he's going to stay in the bubble. Now the bubble refers to this this line right here. So this, this gap right here that you're going to have, instead of putting him in a five, because it's a reduced alignment, they put him in a nine, and then he's going to be in here. A lot of NFL teams will play in the bubble, whereas some hybrid guys will, will play in a solid technique and keep him in a five and move him down. But with this condensed set, probably better off playing the bubble so he can see the crack. So again, you've got quarters now every, everywhere. He's going to leverage the hash right here. He's pretty much locked up. You're going to have some sort of a, kind of an, an out and an in concept here. They're going to treat it like a stack. So as they go, you can see how the linebacker now is going to meet the orbit motion on the other side. Now, they're going to run power. So that, that tight end is going to kind of give a jab step and then work inside. And then every, they're going to down, if you notice, they're going to down on the three. Okay, the nose is in a G. They're going to down, down, down. Everybody's going down, and then you're going to get the kick out by the guard. Okay, so the guard right now is going to kick out on the D end. Okay, you have the wide receiver that's coming in here, but as he flashes in here, he's going to turn. Okay, to pick up to pick up the guy. This he's kind of the over flood. So even though he makes contact, that's because the nickel overruns the play. The tight end actually misses it. So this is actually a, a good look at had they have ended up being able to hit here and hit here, there is a huge crease for him. This guy would have been able to kind of turn and kind of lead block. It would have been an even bigger play. Um, but instead, he kind of hits it right down the middle and ends up being in safety. So this is they're trying to hit this almost like A-gap power right here. And this is a good look at it. Tight end misses, so he just keeps on going because the nickel is doing it. So why are we watching this play? Very simple. The design of the big nickel scheme is this guy is going to be in somewhat coverage of this guy. Now, obviously, he's going to have support, but what San Francisco is trying to do is they don't want to run at Anthony Barr. Anthony Barr is a freak. He's like 6'5", 250, and can run like can run like a deer. So they don't want they don't want that. They want these two guys to switch. Okay, so the the way that they do that is through change of strength motion. So now they're going to motion change of strength. So now what they've got is they've got their light guy at the point of attack. And so now they're going to run right down at it. And, and it's a good thing because he's not comfortable playing in the box. You know, most linebackers, if they were to see something like this, he's hammering down in there. Okay. This guy can't, would, would it probably end up running into him? 
that D end is kind of out and can fold. And then now you've got this guy coming in and now you've got two guys on that shoulder. So you end up or are you should be in plus alignment over here. But because of they, what they're doing is they're running at a guy that's not used to playing in a box, which is part of the whole process. He kind of reacts too far, kind of works out instead of downhill. And now it's off to the races. So here's the same almost identical look. Okay, we're going to get the almost identical look later in the game, except for the only big difference is that this is under center. Okay, and they're doing the same thing. They're going to move him over. Okay, you can see now they've got that big nickel in. They've got the, they've got the safety down there, and, and the San Francisco 49ers got exactly what they want. They've got the, the nickel into the boundary, into the power. So remember, these is a condensed set. All, it looks like they're all going to block down. Okay. What you end up getting off of this is, instead of running power, they run zone. So now they're going to run a split zone with an orbit off of it, or uh, basically to give the reverse. Okay, so he, again, is going to meet that, that reverse on the other side and check that. He now has to stay. Now this, instead of sealing here, he goes ahead and goes straight for the corner. Okay, and what that ends up doing is it allows that nickel to stay free. And this is a great job of that five technique. You know, he's got the three technique, so he feels that he knows he's got to set the edge. He didn't get a down block, so he's not going to stutter and wait for something, for, wait for the puller. He knows he's getting this base block, so he knows he's got to get outside of that. Now you've got everybody moving lateral. That keeps him free, and that keeps him free. He's going to fall off on the back side, and then he can slowly return back in once he notices it, once this orbit kind of clear, clears it. Okay, so as we keep going through the play, you can see that nickel stays free. The DN does a great job of holding it, and now you can do it. So if you talk to anybody that runs a uh, 4 2 5 or any kind of hybrid defense, this is exactly what they want. Okay, they don't want that nickel to be, to be covered up or in charge of a gap. Now he's, now he's gapped out. Okay, he doesn't have a gap. Because he's now in the B gap, he's now in the C gap. You've got Mike who's shuffling, and then if it were to penetrate in the A, would take it. You've got your fallback, and then you've got your snap out. Okay, this would be your gap exchange right here. So you're just fitting the ball right here. This thing's going to end up popping front door just because there's nowhere else for it to go. Now, because he doesn't seal, and he works up to the corner, now we're going to have a free player in the nickel. The nickel's able to kind of hold the edge. Uh, and end up making this play at the DN. So it's a great example of how uh, you can use that change of strength motion uh, on offense and how the 49ers did it to kind of get the, get the two looks that they wanted. One bad for the defense, one good for the defense, and how, how it adjusts. Now let's take a look at this. So why is, why is Minnesota not in their big nickel and they're just playing in their base? That's because we've got, tw uh, we've got 21 personnel. So your tight end is actually going to move and he's going to change the strength of, uh, of the formation. Uh, but you still have this. So again, they don't need to bring in that third safety. So this is how NFL teams match up on down to down. So because they've got 21 personnel, they're going to keep their base defense in there. So now they got four linemen, they got their three bi bigger backers, and then their regular secondary players. So if you were to go to the earlier two clips, we were in 11 personnel. Well, to match with that and to hold a little bit steadier in the run game, uh, they went ahead, uh, Minnesota went ahead and brought in their, their kind of their big nickel package with their, or their three safety look. Okay, so now we get change of string motion. So you can see they're setting the front to the passing strength. Now we get change of strength motion, okay? Now he's on the other side, so now they're resetting the front because it's a shift, okay? Now if you're if you're one of the you're a team that you you deal with this a, a lot, you know if you get quick motion and he doesn't necessarily get set, you can always just uh, blood it, and all blood means it would be to go from an over to an under. Well, really, you'd be going now with a change of strength, okay? You'd be now it just sets the front in the in the correct in the correct form. So that's an easy way to do that post snap if you're getting that. So again, here we go. We got this motion, change of strength motion. Okay, everybody's bouncing over. And so what you kind of get the same look. Okay, now what they're doing is they're running a split zone, but they're giving they're kind of giving that false read, that false key over here with the fullback, and he's going to come back on that. But you're still getting 
that same orbit motion and look that we got from, from before. All this is is just different window dressing from formations. Okay, in the one before we were in a bunch set. Now we're now we're in an I formation, a slot, what I would call I slot. Okay. And it's the same thing. And what again, what ends up happening is you get every, you know, you get everybody working, you get everybody working over. Okay? So he's going to bang and push out here. He overtakes. He overtakes because and because he works this way, that guy's going to climb. Well, the problem is now he's got all the leverage and all he's reading is ball. Seeing flow here, he's going to step more and then he's going to come back and seal off that backside. Okay, so let's let the play run through. Bar ends up staying right in the gap and ends up making the play. And, and really, you think about it, it's a win for the defense. Okay, because you held him under three yards. Anytime you can hold the offense under three yards, you're probably winning, winning the down. So again, little nuances of how the, the NFL matches up, how you get different looks depending on uh, different things. Now, the last little note that I'm going to make on this is how quarters, and it, you know, you've got a lot of quarters. So Minnesota ends up running a ton of quarters, even against these two back sets against the 49ers and that's very specific reason and the reason is because of all these orbit motions you don't want your corner uh running off with a guy and then your interior guy kind of moving and then they've got an, a, an orbit motion or they're trying to work guys back the reason why they're in a too high shell is because this is you really only have three verticals Okay, but you've got to you've got two high safety with this condensed set. You know you're probably going to get some sort of high low. So let's just say they run uh, kind of like a you know uh, NFL deep cross that you see all the time. That he can push out or he can push in and make it even more of a level set. So if you're going to do that, you can you can layer this thing out. The nice thing about this is that you end up having solid edges. So this corner is going to force that tight end out meaning that he can't double the point of attack and then seal him in and let him run underneath the table. With him going out, now that corner sits in the flat. So now he's looking he's looking to pin here, and what you end up getting is from depth, he's going to flat foot and insert down. He's going to flat foot, and then he's going to he's going to have a better angle at it. And that's why they end up using cor quarters in this this kind of uh, against this kind of offense is just because it gives you just a better spacing and better visual cues of what's going on. Because if you end up seeing it, this corner on, up top is here, ready to to accept and collect that orbit motion. Once these safeties see it, he's coming in at a 45. I like to tell my safeties come in at a 45, sink and slide once you get to linebacker depth. And then obviously with here, you got fit support. So if he, he's going to try and hold the outside, you know, you've got to fit off bar. If bar comes outside and that ball leaks inside, then I'm fitting inside. If bar would have gotten sealed inside, then now I've got to work outside. So that's kind of why I like quarters against this anyway. Uh, and especially against offenses like this. So if this becomes more popular in your region or you're starting to see these condensed sets, quarters really gives you a great answer uh, versus some of this stuff and these orbit motions, these zip motions. It always gives you an outside overhang on the end. So thank you for joining me on this kind of this first episode of Chess Match. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter uh, at the underscore coach underscore A. Make sure you always check out matchquarters.com for the latest in defensive content.